agency looks at everything from background checks and insurance to the safety setup of the facility. It's uh, all encompassing, so it really will give a, a I guess a comfort, if you will, to the parent that's trying to find the best facility for their child. And to check on a facility's license or a daycare's license, you can do that through the health department. You can do it online or by giving them a call. Reporting live tonight, Alyssa Hyman, WPTV News Channel 5. A judge denied bond this morning for the man accused of killing two Dreyfus School of the Arts custodians. Javier Burgos turned himself into the U.S. Embassy in Colombia Wednesday. His arrest followed a nearly four-year manhunt. FBI agents brought him to Palm Beach County. Police say he confessed to killing Ted Arama and Christopher Marshall in 2013. Investigators have not talked about a motive or why Burgos ultimately turned himself in. A gag order stays in effect for Dahlia DiPolito's attorneys. The District Court of Appeals denied DiPolito's request to do away with that gag order put in place by the judge. Under it, DiPolito's attorneys cannot make any comment about the case or trial until a jury is sworn in and jury selection for DiPolito's third trial begins next week. Her second one ended in a deadlock. The Boynton Beach woman is being tried on a 2009 charge accusing her of hiring a hitman to kill her then husband. I'm Ashley Hinton live in the newsroom. Singer Ariana Grande says she will return to Manchester, England following Tuesday's suicide bombing shortly after her concert that left 22 people dead. In a letter she tweeted out uh, to her followers here, it says Grande uh, will hold a benefit concert to help raise money for the victims of the attack. The singer says that she will announce when the concert will be held when plans are finalized. Her announcement, it comes as raids continue across England to find those connected to the suicide bomber. Michael, back to you. Ashley, thank you time-lapse video overlooking St. Anne Square in Manchester shows the memorial that continues to grow since the attack. Incredible images of a community, a country, and as always really a global community coming together. New at 5, the future of the Port St. Lucie Police Department looks bigger. The TC Palm reporting city leaders there are planning to conduct a staffing analysis to see if the department needs a fifth Police district. Right now, the department employs 231 officers. Leaders say the additional manpower is needed as Port St. Lucie continues to grow. The expansion would mean more patrolled areas and hopefully quicker response times. The city of Stewart will hire an outside agency to investigate whether former mayor Tom Campini made inappropriate comments to city employees. He resigned this week after allegations of age discrimination. News Channel 5's Andrew Ruiz on who will now lead the Martin County City. Stewart citizens. And we're a circus now. And commissioners. And it's terrible that we have to sit up here and subject ourselves to outside investigations. Embarrassed about the recent incidents involving the mayor's office. Commissioners Friday appointed Troy McDonald as mayor, the city's third in four months. Eula Clark resigned in February following pig comments she made about an officer. This week, Tom Campenny resigned after allegations surfaced of age discrimination. A city employee claimed Campenny told him he would not support him for the city manager position because the city needed a younger guy with fresh ideas. I do feel embarrassed and it's and it's painful. Friday, McDonald and commissioners voted to spend up to $12,000 on an external investigation to see whether Campenny committed acts similar to those he's accused of. We take the spending of taxpayer dollars uh, very seriously, but we owe it to our employees, we owe it to the citizens. Even though a human resources investigation found Campenny didn't intend to discriminate, commissioners still approved a recommendation to remove him from the city manager selection process. A split vote did prevent them, however, from removing Campenny from the various boards he serves on. Some felt this move would be excessive. We all can make mistakes, and I think we should pay for those mistakes. But I'm not sure that we should pay permanently for the mistakes. Also at today's meeting, the board appointed a new vice mayor and adopted a code of ethics, which the mayor says should help guide this commission and future ones. In store, Andrew Ruiz, WPTV News Channel 5. A reminder for people who live in St. Lucie County, a fertilizer ban begins June 1st through the end of September. The ban involves fertilizer with nitrogen and phosphorus. Those can run off from lawns and they can feed potential algae blooms in the St. Lucie River and Indian River Lagoon, so be advised. Those who use bicycles to get around part of West Palm Beach may soon be safer. Our partners at the Palm Beach Post reporting city leaders are developing protected bike lanes. That mean a divider will be placed between the road and the bike lane. 
The bike lane in this case will be built on Cumberland Drive between Military Trail and Village Boulevard. The new project will cost the city about $1.15 million. Fort Pierce City leaders are hoping to turn this plot of land into a downtown hotel. The land along 2nd Street was the site of a former power plant. T.C. Palm reports city leaders there began planning to, or to start looking for a hotel developer next month. Plans are to build a hotel with retail shops on the ground floor. And the sinkhole that opened outside Mar-a-Lago now fixed. That means the far east lane of Southern Boulevard now open to traffic. The sinkhole was caused by a stormwater pipe collapsing Monday about five feet below ground. This week, we're highlighting our local spellers in this year's Scripps National Spelling Bee. And tonight, News Channel 5's morning anchor Mike Trim introduces you to Tyler. D-A-C-T-Y. Ask Tyler Byrne to spell a word. B-R-O-U. And his mind goes to word origins. French words, a sh sound. Definitions and tenses. If I hear something that might sound like a root from a language and I hear that in the definition, I'll be like, oh, this is from uh, this root from this language. I don't know. This is how I spell it. It's this skill that has landed Tyler a spot in the Scripps National Spelling Bee. He just finished the eighth grade at All Saints School in Jupiter and is preparing for the competition. I've been going over spelling rules and and spelling words and vocabulary. Tyler's mom says spelling came naturally for her son. When Tyler was Three years old, he just loved to read. He wanted to read everything and couldn't, couldn't put books down. Books were his passion. In fact, this isn't Tyler's first time at the competition. WPTV first told you about Tyler before he went to the competition two years ago. He's studying more than he did two years ago. He's, I think he, he wants to perform well. He wants to do well. Hyperpyrexia. Tyler didn't make it past the written portion of the National Spelling Bee in 2014, but this time he says he has a new strategy. I'm practicing every day as much as I can. I L L O. -N. We'll keep you posted on Tyler's progress, and you can watch the Scripps National Spelling Bee next week on ESPN. Mike Trim, WPTV News Channel 5.